Hello chess friends! In this lesson today we will talk about endgames Rook and the Bishop versus Rook. This famous position which you see on the board was studied by and named after François André Philidor. This is winning position and White will win here because his king has reached the 6th rank and the black king is very poorly placed on the last rank. But if this type of position happened on the board, it is actually because of very bad play for black and inferior defense. So in general, rook and the bishop versus rook endgame is drawn, but if Philidor position appears, it is a win. But it is still tricky to win. Let's see how white wins in a Philidor position. White will start with rook f8 move. Maybe it will look like that bishop c6 is better move. It looks like as a great move, in fact, but it is actually very bad move because now black has excellent defense. Excellent defense, which is rook d7. And of course, if bishop takes d7, it is stalemate. And if he plays something like king c5, then we don't have any more Philidor position and black has good draw chances. That is why bishop to c6 is bad move and rook f8 is the best. There is only one move for black, which is rook e8, and now we play rook f7 and we take control of the 7th rank. At this moment there are several possible moves for black and we will discuss about all of them. There is only one possible move by king, king c8. That is very bad defense, and white wins the game thanks to rook a7 move, threatening checkmate rook a8. After rook d8 check, king c6, king b8, now simply rook b7 check, king a8, and rook to b1. And now if rook c8 check, just king b6 discovered check, king b8, and rook a1 and nothing stops checkmate on a8 square. Or if king tries to escape on a7, then we do a very simple win again, king c7, attacking the rook and threatening the checkmate. So king c8 as a first move is very bad move from this position. Second very bad move is rook g8, because simply rook d7 discovered check wins the rook. If rook went to h8 instead of g8, it is still very easy win because of rook a7 move, threatening rook a8, rook b6 check and bishop e6. Now checkmate rook a8 cannot be stopped, whatever black plays, it will be rook a8 checkmate. There are three left moves for black and these moves are rook e3, rook e2 and rook e1. Rook e2 is probably the best defense for black. If black plays rook e1, for example, then this is the position which white will aim and it will reach in the main line which I will now show you. If instead of rook e1 black plays rook e3, then it is also losing because third rank is called losing rank. And again we will reach the same position with the rook on the third rank, nevertheless what black plays at this moment. So as we said, the best move is rook to e2. But now we just play one tempo move, rook g7. This is now forcing black to do something. He cannot play any king move because it will be immediate checkmate, for example, king e8, rook g8 checkmate, so he must move the rook. If he moves the rook to the third rank, that is so-called losing rank, so better is rook e1. And now, rook goes to the other side, rook b7, threatening checkmate, rook b8. There are two possible defenses now. One is to play king c8, the other is to play rook c1, defending checkmate over c file. If king c8, this is so-called rook losing line. Because after rook a7, we threaten checkmate, the only defense is rook b1, 
And now rook h7 threatening another checkmate, rook h8. After king b8, rook h8 check, king a7, rook a8, and rook b8, we win the rook. That is why this line is called rook losing line. So better defense for black is rook to c1. And now great move for white, forcing black rook to the third rank, which is the losing rank. That move is bishop b3. Now black is in Zugzwang, he can't move the king because of rook b8, so he must play rook to e3. If king c8, if king c, if king c8, then rook b4 with simply bishop e6 check and rook b8 idea. Let's see now what is going on when rook goes to the third rank. Simply he will play rook to c3. Then bishop e6 threatening checkmate rook b8. The only move is rook d3 check. Bishop d5 check still threatening checkmate rook b8. So rook c3 is forced move and now we have the same position which could happen if in the second move black played immediately rook e3. So if your opponent doesn't know the third rank is a losing rank and in the beginning of the position he put the rook on the third rank, you will just spend some time and avoid some moves to reach this position. But he cannot avoid to enter into this. Now, very important move is rook d7 check. This is very important move. Black has two options, king e8, which is bad move, and king c8, which is better, but still losing move. King e8 is instantly losing because of rook g7. He threatens checkmate rook g8. The only defense could have been rook f3, but look now about the great position of bishop on d5, which is controlling this f3 square. This is the perfect position for white's light squared bishop. So, as we said, better move after rook d7 is king c8. And now the move which players easily forget. That move is rook f7. It is a checkmate threat, rook f8. So king b8 is the only move, and now it is rook b7 check. Of course, that trivial win is after king a8, because of rook c7, which wins the rook. So he must play king to c8. King to c8. And almost the end of the winning Philidor position is great rook b4 move. Only this move wins the game. Now, it is the question what will actually black do now. Black has several possible options. First option is rook d3 to pin the bishop. But then, white wins the game because of rook a4 and checkmate cannot be stopped on a8 square. Again, because b3 square is perfectly defended by the bishop. Second option is rook c1 just to keep the rook on the c file, but then bishop e6 check and rook b8 easy checkmate. And finally, if black moves the king, playing king d8, now what wins? Well, the reason why we put the rook on the 4th rank to be able to play bishop c4 to stop black rook being able to go back to c8 and now rook b8 checkmate cannot be stopped if rook plays anywhere if king c8 just bishop e6 and rook b8 checkmate again if king e8 of course rook to b8 so the end game rook and the bishop versus rook maybe one if in two different cases. First, if defender doesn't know the defensive methods, or if a, so some of the favorable positions is achieved in the game. So you really need to know this winning method in order to be able to win this endgame if it shows up in your game. There is just one more position which I want to point out, which is at the moment when you played bishop b3, if at that moment black doesn't go to the third rank and plays king c8, now 
Rook b8 wins the game because after King d8 we play Rook g4. Rook g4. Threatening checkmate on g8 square. And after Rook e1 to stop that, because after Rook g8 there is Rook e8 to cover the check, we play Bishop a4. Look how this Bishop on uh, b3 or a4 is controlling e1 square and not allowing black rook to check white's king. After king c8, bishop c6 still threatening checkmate, rook g8, rook d1 check, bishop d5, king b8, and finally after rook a4 there is no any way to stop checkmate on a8 square. So this was Philidor position and now you know how to win the game if Philidor position happens on the board. But at the beginning we said that this game is in general drawn. There are two methods how to keep draw from some random position if you are weaker side. These two methods are the second rank defense or the Cochrane's defense. Now we are going to see an examples for both. This is the position for the second rank defense. Official name is second rank defense, but it can also be a seventh rank defense, B file defense or G file defense, depending on where are the pieces at the moment. This is actually passive defense, much more passive than Cochrane's defense, which we will see later. And your pieces, king and the rook, are placed passively. There are not many options for black at the moment. So the rook has actually alternate between c2 and d2 square and you have to keep the king on the second rank as long as possible. So rook d2, rook h5, so white will try to attack along h5, rook c2, rook h2 check and king d1. So white's rook is that now under attack and he can bring the king closer. Rook h1, king e2, rook h2, king d1, and let's say some move like rook h3. So white is trying to win and he will not repeat the position again. After king e2, he may try to win with bishop c3. So the plan and the point for black is to keep his king away of the last rank as long as it is possible. It looks like that white is winning now, but in fact, it is still drawn. The move is, of course, king d1. There is nothing better to be played. And now there are several options for white. We are going to see now some of them. First, if rook e3, of course, we immediately make draw by t exchanging the rooks with rook e2. Now we are going to see one example from the game where white was Arkady Naidic and black Ruslan Ponomaryov. The game was played in Dortmund in 2010, in which, in this critical position, Naidic, who was trying to win this game, played king d3. But there is wonderful rook d2 move played by Ponomaryov. Of course, capturing this rook will lead to the immediate stalemate, so he played, of course, something else, king c4. Rook g2. Rook e3. King c2, rook e1, rook g4 check, bishop d4, king d2, rook e8, rook g2. Look how black is keeping his rook and the king on the second rank. Bishop c3, king c2, rook e4, rook, simply f2. Rook g4, king d1, bishop d4, rook c2 check, king b3, rook h2, and after bishop c3, the game ended as a draw. There is no way to make progress and to win the game. Another possible move to try to win is waiting move rook g3. Then just king e2, rook e3 check, and of course not be careful now king d1 because of rook e1's uh, checkmate. So black must play king f2. King f4, rook e2. Rook f3 check. King g2, bishop d4, rook d2, rook g3 check, king f1, rook g1, king e2, bishop e3, rook d1, and still no way to win the game. This is also drawn. 
if for example king goes to d4 then king e2 rook h2 king d1 rook h1 king e2 rook a1 king f3 look now how we shift the position for king and the rook to this other part of the board actually now to g file and this is not anymore second rank defense this is now the defense along g file which is the same method but the game is still drawn there is no any way to make the win this is absolutely all the same like the second rank defense just everything is happening along g file and there is one more move for white to try to win the game that is rook h1 check king e2 king d4 king f3 rook f1 now instead of um, running actually you are able to interpose your rook simply to play rook f uh, rook f2 so rook f2 rook a1 king g4 rook a2 rook g2 and again we have second rank defense in this case g file defense the game is easily drawn now we are going to see the Cochrane's method of defense this is an example of the Cochrane defense the Cochrane defense is based on the fact that um, white has problems unpinning his bishop there are two rules which you need to remember here first rule is that uh, you need to allow attacking king to move first and second rule is that to move your own king on the opposite direction of the attacking king. So here, of course, you just play rook to e1. And then, position is all the same. If white wants to win, he must move the king. King d5. Okay, now when white king has moved, we have the rule number two, which says move your king on the opposite direction of a white king. This is easy now, king f8. So now white has to play rook or the bishop. If king returns to e5, then your king returns to e8 and no progress has been done. Bishop f5. Now you have to be careful not to attack this bishop with rook f1. Then black will play king e6, white will play king e6 and he will have now winning chances. Simply, you need to cut this king along e file keep it there and play rook e7 this move is not easy to find and um, you need to be familiar to this position to know for this move now this Cochrane's method of defense will transpose into the second rank defense now let's say what are possible moves rook a8 rook a1 or maybe rook a6 for example uh, in the game which was played um, in the long 1982, uh, Ljubomir Ljubojevic played as white against Lajos Portis, who played as black, and Ljubojevic played rook a1. And look how the game ended as a draw. Rook e2, bishop e6, king e7, rook a7, king f6, rook f7, king g5, and look how this transposed also in uh, second rank defense could transpose, but there is no chance to make progress in this position rook a4 check king e5 rook a5 check bishop d5 and now look again Cochrane defense but just on different on different squares it is all the same no chance to make progress this is the key position we just wait for the black white king to move first and we go to the opposite direction with our king. Excellent presentation of this position played by Lajos Portis here. He was also able to play rook g5, but it's enough to play rook a5 also for a draw in this position. This is easy draw endgame, and the game ended as a draw now, when actually it transposed into the second rank defense, in this case, seventh rank defense. Another possible move uh, is um, rook a6, but then we have immediately an example of second or seventh rank defense, and this is also completely drawn. Or, for example, if rook a8 check is played, then simply king f7, 
and we immediately uh, have our king out of the edge of the board the second rank defense method has been has been created and the game is drawn but there is one important note here white will always try to win as long as it is possible so you need to be careful to the end of the game you need to play 50 consecutive moves in this position and then to claim the draw if you don't lose in this 50 moves but applying either Cochrane's method of defense or second rank defense now it will be easy for you to make draw in an endgame rook and the bishop versus rook that will be all for this lesson if you like this lesson and if you want to see more video chess lessons like this, please click on like, share or subscribe to my channel.